Ruth chapter 2. So filled. Four chapters of the Bible. And Naomi had a kinsman. Now verse 1 is the Holy Spirit going to give you a little bit introduction into the actual story of verse 2. So when you go into the story of verse 2, you're going to know ahead. It's almost like a narrator speaking out. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Limonet. Now that's Naomi's husband. And his name was Boaz. So Boaz is family to Eliminate. Boaz is wealthy. Boaz is in the family of Eliminate. He's a mighty man. He is family to Naomi. He is family to the two sons that died. He's family to Ruth and Ophrah. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field, type of world, and glean ears. Let me go out and pick. Ruth is an immigrant and doesn't call upon welfare. She's going out to work. Illegal immigrants. Well, Ruth is an illegal immigrant. That Moabitess. Let's check out Deuteronomy 23. We, we talked about it yesterday. Deuteronomy 3. Let's see how important words are in the Bible. Deuteronomy 23, 3. And how you must not change the words of God. Now, Deuteronomy 23, 3, we're going to read the verse. And these are the children of Lot. Who would not give Israel into the promised land any help, any access on the highway. And the Bible says, I will curse them that curse you, Israel. The Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Jehovah. Again, I say Jehovah because we're in the Old Testament. And that's who the L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is. That's Jehovah. That's Almighty. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the distinction when I say Jehovah. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt. And because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, and we've done all that. Now when you come to the beginning part of Deuteronomy 23, two, 3. An Amorite or M-O-A-B-I-T-E. Now let's see how the Holy Spirit does not mess with the scriptures. As we go back to Ruth chapter 2, and let's read. Verse 2. And Ruth, the M-O-A-B-I-T-E-S-S. -S. She is not mentioned at all in Deuteronomy 23. Now, had Naomi had daughters, and daughters married the men of Moab, and the story of the sexes would have been changed, then it would have been totally wiped out. The story. And you got to be careful, you know, when we get to this immigration issue. Now, I'm not going to get much into it, but Ruth was an immigrant, and look how much God blessed her. And as far as America, to the Native Americans, we were illegal immigrants. And by force, we took the land. And that's all I'm going to say. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears. That's barley. At the end of uh, chapter 1, verse 22, barley. Barley, wheat, and corn are all called ears. It's not the corn that American thinks about. After him, in whose sight I shall find grapes. All right, it's barley harvest. I'm going to go out to a field, and whatever field that they will allow me to go in and glean after the harvesters, that's where I'm going to go. And this is the law. The law said to the Jew, you go harvest your crops 
you do not gather all the crops. And that which is left behind is for the fatherless, for the widows, for the strangers. So what Ruth is doing, she doesn't realize she's obeying the law. And she's seeking the mercy of God, does not know the law. But Naomi, we are both widows. I am unclean to the Israelites, but we need food. And I'm young enough, let me go. And I'm going to go to the, to the fields. And whoever allows me to do it. Okay. May the God that I came to seek give me grace. Because that in whom I sight I find grace. And she said unto her, Go, this will be Naomi, my daughter. And she, Ruth, went and came and gleaned in the field. After the reapers, the reapers are gone through. Anything left, there she is. There's other widows. There's other fatherless. There's other strangers. There's other people with this group. And her hat. It's an English root word. And it's her appointed place. Hat. Her appointed place. It's where God fell for her to be. Her hat was the light on a part, on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. Now, see, without that introduction, the Holy Spirit, verse 1, uh, who, who's really Boaz? Who was of the kindred of Eliminate. And he's not even in the picture yet. But she comes across Boaz's field. We don't know if she knows it or not. But here's a field to allow her to come in. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. So he's not in the field. He comes to the field and said unto the reapers, his workers, the Lord be with you. And they answer him, the Lord bless thee. So he is pleasing to his laborers, and his laborers are pleasing to him, and there is fellowship there. And there's God blessings. And we will see, then said Boaz unto his servant, this would be the guy in charge. This guy who is unnamed would be type of the Holy Spirit reporting to God, the Father, the Son. About a Gentile bride that's going to be the bride of Boaz, a type of Jesus Christ. Boaz is a type of Jesus Christ. This servant is a type of the Holy Spirit. Ruth, an unsaved Gentile who will become the bride of Boaz. So the Holy Spirit reports back to Jesus. And look at the look at the response. That was over the reapers. He's the boss. Who are the reapers? Those are the ones that are saved. Those are they're out there in the fields working. Jesus said the fields are ripe on the white. Oh, if everybody would get out there and work. There was a man that went out and sold seed. And the servant was set over the reapers, answered and said, It's a modifiedish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. He knows about Ruth. He knows about us. Even before we come to know Boaz, the Holy Spirit knows. He knows who we were, and he knows what we were. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. She's polite, and she seeks permission. So she came and has continued. 
She's continuing. She's active. Even from morning until now. She's here early in the morning, and whatever time it is, she's still working. That she tarried a little in the house. She didn't take coffee breaks, longer ones. She didn't. She went in the house, or whatever the business in the house, she did her business, and then she came back out <coughs> and done the work. She's a faithful worker. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, here is thou not my my daughter. Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from hence. But abide here fast by my maiden. Boaz has given her an invitation. Stay in my field. Be under my authority. Be amongst my maidens. Be under the servant that's in charge of my field. Don't go anywhere else. Don't go out to a religion. Don't go out under Satan. Stay under me, Jesus Christ, Boaz. Under the leadership of the servant, the Holy Spirit. Don't run out to the world. Stay with my maidens. Fellowship with my maidens. Let thy eyes be on the field that they do reap. Right in here, right in front of you. And go thou after them. When the reapers go, as they're going, follow them. And get your substance. Have I not charged young men that they shall not touch thee? He has given protection on the roof. You keep your hands off that damsel. You keep your job doing what you're supposed to do. And she's going to pick behind you. I give her full permission. Which would probably include the fact is. That when these reapers went out in the fields. And the fatherless and the widows and the strangers came. It looks like. They would harass them. They would try to forbid them. And Boaz is allowing according to the law. Allow them to do what they need to do because that's the law. And you remember, this is the time of the judges. And in those days, there was no king in Israel. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Boaz is doing right by God. Boaz is not typical to the... Why is Ruth not a chapter in Judges? Because Boaz is not following the SOP of Judges. And that's why this book is separate. Everybody's doing whatever they want to do and getting by whatever they need to get by and Boaz is doing right. And he's confirming to his hands and confirming to everybody around that woman Ruth. Leave her alone. Let her do. And he's admonishing her to be with the right crowd. Don't hang out with the world. Don't go in any other field. I'll take care of you. What a promise. He's reaching out to Ruth. He's inviting her. When thou art athirst, go on to the vessels and drink that which the young men have drawn. Now that's interesting because Jesus told a woman at the well, I am the water of life. The young men would be the men like in the book of Acts that went out with that water and brought that water to people who were thirsty. And he's telling Ruth, drink of my water. It's in his field. It's on his land. It's there. And if you need it, you need a drink, go get yourself a drink. You need to thirst yourself. You need to, that refreshing. It's healthy to drink. Because the servants already told her she's not going to spend excessive time at the water cooler. If she has a thirst, she's going to walk over there. She's going to get her cup or two cups of water. She's going to drink them. And then she's going to put the cup down. She's going to go right back to work. 
And don't worry about you having to draw the water. I have men already that have drawn. And when the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel, we are drawing water out for people to drink. It's not the sinner coming and drawing their own water. That would be salvation of their own works. And that's not salvation at all. We partake of the, of the water of life of Jesus Christ, and we take that water and we put it out to people to come. You got the gospel message here in Ruth. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground. She's humbled. If she fell on her face and she's on her knees, she comes back up and she's got dirt and maybe barley all over her face. And unlike the woman that came from the rib of Adam, mankind, Adam, came from the dirt. And he is that dirt over her face. In the field that is Boaz's field. I got the stuff, oh, it, it, what I got on my face is even yours. And said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? Why have I found grace? And she said in verse 2, I shall find grace. And then she says to him, why have I found grace? What Boaz is doing for her, she never expected. She expected to go out there, get some barley, come home, boom. She never expected to be needled out among all the people in the field. She never expected to be, you're protected, those guys will leave you alone. You have access to the same water as my as my employee. And I give you open permission. That is more grace than what she expected to get. That thou shouldest now take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Now look at that. Look what she does to Jesus. She falls down before him. And she pleads, why if I, why am, I'm not worthy. And I'm a stranger. I'm not a child of God. I'm a child of Satan. And yet I am Satan's child and you have taken knowledge of me. You have been kinder to me <coughs> than what my father Satan has been to me why I don't understand and that's where the Bible says the love of God for God is love no man that has never known God cannot know love except they know God for God is love Satan does not show his people what Boaz is shown to prove and Boaz answered and said unto her it has fully been shown me by the servant, the Holy Spirit, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law. Now, now see, we're in the Old Testament. We're not in the New Testament. And look at the works for salvation. Everything she had done for Naomi has gotten Boaz's attention. And if Ruth to take care of a woman that Ni uh, that Naomi, her mother-in-law, that she is no longer obligated and still fulfills the family act of taking care of her mother-in-law, who is not her mother-in-law no more by death. And yeah, you are a stranger. But the Bible, the law says if you help a Jew, if you bless a Jew, Look at him running back to the, to the Bible, the Jews. God says, if you bless the Jew, I will bless you. Look at Ruth. She's blessing the Jew, and Boaz is saying, I'm going to bless you. How's that? Thy mother-in-law, which is Jewish, since the dead of thy husband, 
how thou hast left thy father and thy mother, Moabites, in the land of thy nativity. Now look at that. And when we look at Christmas and we look at Bethlehem, we think about the nativity of Jesus Christ, correct? Well, where are we? We're in Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, Boaz speaks about nativity and not the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. You left your family of Moabites where they serve G-O-D-S. They don't serve G-O-D. And you left all that to serve our God to be with our people. Watch. And art come unto a people, the Jews, which thou knewest not hitherto before. You don't know who we are. Only one you knew is your husband and his family. So it was soon to me. I'm going to assume this. You do not have to take this. When we come back to Ruth 1, verse 16. I'm going to assume this. This may not be correct. And Ruth said, Entreat me now to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. I think somehow what she said there got in the ears of Boaz. Now whether Naomi's been telling people what she said, but I'll tell you one thing, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ knows what we said when the whole world doesn't know what we said. And by every idle word Jesus said, man shall give an account thereof. And those were not idle words out of the roof. And that, what we just read in chapter 2 matches 1, 16. You left your father and your mother's house and your nativity. And you come unto a people which thou knew is not there too. The Lord recompense, repay, thy work. Again, we're Old Testament, the work. We're not New Testament. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. Old Testament. I will bless the Jews. If you, if you bless the Jews, I will bless you. Under whose thick wings thou art come to trust again, that is chapter 1, verse 16. Somehow Boaz got word of her words. It matches. And that is the very reason why Ruth came with Naomi to Israel. She didn't come to Israel to take care of Naomi. Though she is, she came because of the God of Naomi. Now, Naomi may have been bitter in chapter 1, but Naomi and her family have put into the mind of Ruth, there is nothing better who to serve but God. He is so good, he's better than the Moabite gods. That Ruth said, I want to go when you go. And then when Naomi said, no, 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 go, go, go back to your face. She's like, no. And Naomi even told her, uh, Naomi said, go back to your parents, go back to your family, get a husband. And Ruth says, nope. And that matches what Boaz tells her, almost word for word. And what I'm going to conclude, the fact is, we're in the Old Testament, yeah. You better be careful what you say, because the Holy Spirit knows what you say, and Jesus Christ knows what you said, and it's being recorded. And for Ruth, it's good. Now, I guarantee she said some vain things. I guarantee she sinned. Then said she, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. Ooh, she's elevating him. I'm just a servant. That would be my boss if he were American. 
she has now put herself under Boaz. Wherefore, she is a stranger. He has allowed her. He has welcomed her into the field. And she has acknowledged his welcome and his invitation by saying, Lord, which means I am under you, sir. And there are people out there who say, Lord Jesus, and they don't do anything that Jesus tells them to do. They got their own ways. They got their own doings. And that's not lordship. When you go to work and your boss says, do this, and you do that, you are his employee. But when your boss tells you to do something and you, you're in your own ball field, I mean, he wants you to do that and you do anything else, that's not your boss. You're not obeying him and you're stealing. So by saying, my Lord, she has agreed to what Boaz has told her. For that thou has comforted me, welcome, taken care of me. Jesus said, I will leave you with a comforter. John 14, 16, 26. That servant that Boaz is going to leave and go about his business, that servant that's in the field is going to say, he's going to make sure those men protect her. He's going to make sure, hey, you make sure there's water there if Ruth needs it. Hey, leave Ruth alone. She's allowed to do that. Ruth, come here. You got any problems? You come see me. You got any troubles? You come see me. I'll comfort you. How's that? Yet we're in the Old Testament, and yet, look at the church age. Look at the comforter. She could have used any other words. And maybe perverted Bibles use other words, but the comfort. And for that, thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid. That woman that's taken in adultery. Oh, Lord God, let us get rocks and you be the first. You know, we're going to stone her. That's what the law says. Jesus wrote down the ground. We don't know what he wrote. He looks up and there's no one else there. And here's this woman. She's probably shaking. She's probably half undressed. She's been humiliated from the people. She's going to probably spec Jesus and scroll around. She's, where, where's your cut? Where, where, where are they? There's no, uh, there's no, near Lord. Well, I've forgiven you. Go and sin no more. Spoken friendly unto her. Woman at the well. <laughs> How many husbands you got? I ain't got no husbands. Yes, you do. You got four of them. One you're with right now. And spoke unto her. Spoken friendly. Unto thy handmaid. Look at that handmaid. She wasn't his handmaid th that morning. She wasn't his handmaid until he showed up. A relationship has happened now between Boaz and Ruth and Ruth and Boaz. She has acknowledged him as Lord and she has acknowledged that I am your servant. I am your handmaid. Though I be not like unto one of thy handmaidens. I'm not Jewish. That's what that means. That's the stranger. I'm not Jewish. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime. I don't know if that would be the lunch. She comes in the morning. We don't know what time Boaz showed up. Come thou hither. And eat of the bread, the bread of life, the water. Look at that. How can you not miss it? He says, you thirsty? Come drink the water. Are you hungry? Come and eat my bread. How can you not miss that? How can you miss Jesus? That's John chapter 6. And dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And... I don't know where you would get the vinegar and the wine, but if there is vinegar of the grapes, so I don't know where to go there with that. But their bread and the water—that's Jesus Christ. And she sat beside the reapers. She's sitting with fellowship and breaking bread. Does that sound familiar? 
with the Reapers. This, in the book of Acts says they went house to house breaking bread. She's an Old Testament saint, but yet she is in the way of being a Christian in the New Testament, which we're not in. And watch this. He reached, he reached, he bites her out to a meal, gives her all the water she can have. And he reached for a parched corn. It's dried. Dried corn. Now, whether there was a sack there or not. And Jesus Christ said in the book of John, least a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. You couldn't miss that one. It will spring up unto life. A seed needs to die in the ground to, to come up. Jesus Christ needed to die to come up. There's the gospel. Death, burial, resurrection. Reached unto her parched corn. And she did eat. And was sufficed and left. Even before the mealtime, he gives her a little snack. Here, here's some parched corn. You, you must be hungry. She takes it and she starts eating. Don't we get a little snack of what heaven is going to be like? And we can't even fathom what heaven is going to be like? Imagine when we get to heaven and stand before God. Stand before Jesus Christ. Imagine the time when we do see Jesus. When we will be seated among the reapers. Peter, James, John. And all the great evangelists. All the great preachers. All the men that worked and served the Lord in the field. When we sit down with fellowship with those people. It's not going to be a grand time if you've never served the Lord. Now, I'm not saying you're going to lose your soul, but I bet you there's going to be a time for those that served the Lord and gone out with the God that they'll be having to tell their stories. There's nothing more when you're out serving the Lord and you pack up the car, you get in the car, and you're on your way home, and everybody's got this wonderful story of what God has done. And my wife will say, did you see that person on this? No, I didn't. And then she'll tell me what I did not see, what I did not know, and be glory to God. And I say, well, look at that person over there. She'll say, what person? And I'll say, did you see that person? And how well? And then we'll be all talking about all three of us seeing something. One idiot cussing us out. As what happened today, and giving us the F-bombs and F-bombs and F-bombs. And they go to the car and they start setting up the car to go home. And I go over to a man named Aaron. And I sit down and have a wonderful talk. And that guy will say, you know what? I'm glad you came over here. You revealed me. You revived me with your words that you just spoke to me. Man said he's saved. He imagine going to heaven one day. And Aaron says, hey, remember that time that we met? <laughs> When all those people were at this, I don't know. And I bet you Ruth did not feel uncomfortable as a Gentile among that crowd. Because what, what are you doing here? Hey, have you ever had a conversation with Boaz? No, I just know him. You mean you never talk with Boaz? Well, let me tell you what he sounds like. And only a Christian can know that. Have you been personally introduced to Jesus by water? No. And yet that woman at the well, the adulteress at the well, Jesus said, come drink of the water. Have you ever been healed like no other healing that no human can do but by what Jesus has done? Imagine that guy that the Bible says he had a withered hand and Jesus said, stretch out that hand. Impossible. Whoa. Wow! And Jesus individually touches us that no other person can touch us like Jesus. Ruth, wonderful. She did eat and was sufficed and left. She was satisfied, working all day just by the handful of purpose that he gave her. 
A handful of what Boaz has given her has satisfied her. As what the world cannot ever satisfy you. That you've got to keep on getting a paycheck every week to fill your mouth and your belly. And Jesus gives her, Boaz gives her just one little handful. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. Now, you can, you can ask my wife, we've been amongst Christians, and we've been part of the public ministry, and there have been Christians saying, that don't work. Why are you doing that way? Maybe there have been people who say, you know, don't stop her. Allow her. Let her. Let her go where even it has been harvested to she. And you know what those sheaves are a type of according to Joseph in his dream in Revelation chapter 12? Those sheaves are the children of Israel. Joseph said, I dreamed the twelve sheaves, and eleven of them rose up and bowed down before my sheep. That pictures Israel. The family of God. A Moabitess, a stranger amongst the sheaves. And don't we sing that song, bringing in the sheaves. And here is the story, Ruth, who's not even a Christian. And what she learned from Boaz today, what a wonderful story she's going to have to bring home and tell all to Naomi. We'll get to that in a moment. Rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field unto even. What? All right. Approaching it. And let, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. As you're going through the fields, miss some. Where she is. Now, you're not going to find that in business in America today. They will take a tree, they will shake that tree, that every one thing is going off that tree. Purposely, accidentally, leave some barley for her. And leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So it's interesting. Reproach her not, rebuke her not. Encourage her is what's being said. Guide her, help her. And if she has not learned how to do it, show her how to do it. If she's doing it slow, show her how to pick up speed. I mean, we're not told that Ruth ever knew how to do this. We don't know what she did in Moab. Rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., a 12-hour workday. That's also Christ will come, which is the church age, and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. And they say it's one ephah is one bushel and three pints. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. But after meeting Boaz, she went right to work. Many Christians, after they come to Jesus, they quit working. And you've got to give the religions out there credit. We talked about this Friday among some people. They are very, very zealous to go out and do what that religion is. But when you get a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, there's no more zeal. Oh, I'm saved. It's okay now. All is, hope. All is safe and sure. That's a wrong attitude. And she took it up, that ephah of barley, and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. Well, she took part of her own and then gave to her mother-in-law. 
Both Naomi now and Ruth has been satisfied by Boaz's provision. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that taketh knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had brought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that I, it's the truth. It's been my testimony. On April 21st, 1987, I met Jesus Christ. I was saved. April 27th, I went home to my father, and I told my dad about Jesus. That's exactly what Ruth did. After she met Boaz and she received Boaz, calling him Lord and his handmaid, she goes home and tells her family about Jesus, about Boaz. And the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. And according to the Bible, if you don't speak, if you don't confess Jesus Christ, we can call that thing into judgment. And that's even found in the New Testament. She comes home and she tells, hey, Boaz. And then the so, side note, verse 20, Naomi said unto her, daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord. Boaz is of the Lord. Jesus Christ is of the Lord. That man in the time of judges is doing right. But didn't we forget something was going on at the end of chapter 1 and at chapter 2? In chapter 1, we read, And it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. There's no barley harvest. In verse 6, And she rose with her daughter-in-law that she might return to the country of Moab, for she heard... For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. God is blessing Boaz at the end of a famine. In the time of the judges, that Boaz is doing everything but what judges record to us. Blessed be of the Lord who has not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead and that's in the law the kinship and I only said unto her the man is near kin unto us one of our own next kinsmen now Boaz said the kindness that you've done for your mother-in-law he did not mention there is a family resemblance there And we'll get to that story later in chapter 3 about this kinsman. But Ruth did not know that she's talking to a family member of her husband that's passed, of his father who's passed, and that according to the Jewish law, this man, though we'll find that there's another, is obligated by the law to take her, to be his, her, to be her husband, to raise up seed in the name of Melimelech. And not only said unto her, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen, next. Now, Naomi doesn't know that there's a nearer kinsman. That'll come up in chapter 3. And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men, until they have ended all my harvest. We're not done. And God will keep you with the Christians. Until the harvest is over. And when that harvest is over. And the trump is blown. He will totally forever to keep us with the Christians. And separate us from those who are not Christians. Jesus said in his own words. The harvest is plentiful. Pray to the Lord that the Lord will send harvestmen out. 
And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens. Don't have anything to do with the men. You're a woman. You are a widow woman. It will give you a bad character for you to go hang out with the men. Go hang out with the women. It won't look right. Ruth has not that kind of character. Hey, you know, I passed by the field of Boaz today. Yeah, well, well, you know, I saw that woman, Ruth. Yeah, I heard she's a good one. Man, you should, she was hanging out with all the men there. Really? What was she doing with them? That they that they meet the not in any other field. Don't go. That's it. Boaz's field. No other worldly field. Boaz's field. Don't get caught with the world. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz. She obeys Naomi. She obeys Boaz. To glean unto the end of the harvest. We're waiting to the. I know I missed barley, but the end of the harvest. You know, for me, the end of harvest is coming whether I die. Then there will be no more harvesting for me. Sowing the seed will be done. I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But what if the rapture happened while I was alive? That's it. That's it. I will not plant any more seed. Whether I die or the rapture. We are still going by the fruit of Ruth. Her fruit, her seeds are still, because in 2018, we are still reading and studying and trying to get our women to be more like Ruth. So she kept fast. That means hard to stick to it in this glue by the maidens of Boaz to glean up to the end of the barley harvest. Let's see what note I got. And watch this. Of wheat harvest. That's the summer. That runs into the feast of weeks. So not only is she now Okay, here, stay in my barley garden, spring, Abed, the first month. But she has also been, hey, when I'm done with the barley, in the seventh month, you are welcome to do my wheat harvest. How's that? And dwell with her mother-in-law. And with her mother-in-law, she gets the reaping of Ruth. When we do what Jesus Christ wants, to, there are others that will also reap. Tarrying by the stuff. Now, Naomi is old. She's home. She can't do much. Now, your wife may be home taking care of the children, or she may be sick and unable to go, or whatever thing that she can't go, she has to stay home. And you as a husband goes out and, and harvests out in the field and put the seed out, Mark chapter 4, your wife at home also gets part of your planning and your, your production of the gospel. How's that? How is that? That's wonderful. That's a blessing. God will take care of us if we will obey what he tells us to do in the mercy and grace that this woman set out into Israel with absolutely nothing and in the end of this chapter she's satisfied with a home she's satisfied with an employer and that's not the end there is more satisfaction for her to come.